My name is Arturo, I work in the Racing Beans, and you watch Dirt Life. Hey, welcome back to Dirt Live. We're here with Lou Peralta and, of course, Roger Norman, our one and only. You know, uh, Lou, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Appreciate you it. Know, he, uh, you've been around a long time. Too long, some people say. Is it? <laughs> and uh, you've promoted racing for many, many years. That's right. And uh, I know you and Roger uh, hooked up, and you know, you've known Roger for many years. And yep. uh, you got great ideas, and uh, we got to really let the folks know about to, how, what we need to do with Baja. Well, it's, uh, Roger and I were talking a little earlier, you know, and it's uh, something that I've been very close to my heart. It's nurturing Baja. You know, we're losing more and more uh, terrain in the States, and it's going away from us. And so we have a place that we really could use for a lot of years as long as we take care of it. And I've been professing that ever since I started promoting events back in 1986, is that uh, we use their land, but we have to be courteous to the people, to the ranchers, to the ajitos. And when we're done, we've got to clean up after ourselves. That's the way we can keep the momentum going, you know. And I think Roger and I were just talking earlier, and I think it's, he's, he's got the same ideas, which is really pleasing. I mean, it's uh, been very close to my heart. I love Baja. I'd probably rather race in Baja now than any place else because of all the restrictions that we have in the United States. So uh, I'm glad to hear that uh, he's really interested in, in furthering the relationships with not only just the cities, you know, like Mexicali and this and that, but also with the ajitos, with the ranchers, the personal uh, uh, touch with them. And uh, that's very important. It's very important to them, by the way. You know, Roger, I know it's pretty cool having Lou. Definitely been around a long time, Lou. Uh, Checker, you know, you've been around. And uh, Roger, just an uh, incredible guy here with us, Lou. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, uh, you know, you mentioned the checkers. Of course, I'm a checker, but uh, it all started really back in 86 because uh, San Felipe was a great race while Score had it. And uh, the people in San Felipe knew me and they wanted to get Sal to go back and Mickey. And I uh, tried to talk him into it and wasn't able to do it. So I went back to tell him the bad news that, uh, that um, uh, they wouldn't want to come back. So they handed me a check and said, you do it. And that's what it was in 1986. And a checker friend of mine that lived in San Felipe, Lonnie Hawkins, and my buddy who passed away also, uh, Max Norris and I decided, well, let's go racing. Let's put on races. And we did pretty well. Yep. So, you know, you, when you heard Roger bought score, you know, back in December, uh, what would you think? Well, you know, um, I'm a great believer that uh, things have to change. I, I've been doing that all my life, even when I kind of, settle into one thing, you know, I, I always look for something different because you got to change people's uh, people's attention span sometimes it goes away from them real quick. So and I met Roger pre running, uh, I think it might have been in Santa Tomas somewhere or something and got a chance to chat with him. I don't know if you remember or not, but we got a chance to chat a little bit. And I thought it was great. Uh, a racer putting on events for racers that to me, that's the, the winning combination. And I started racing myself. So I know how to think about the race courses and how to set them up as a racer, you know, and how to, do, how to put it together so that the racers can go out and have a good time, get the challenge, but at the same time be cognizant that uh, we got to take care of things down there. And, and Roger, you feel the same way. I mean, once you took over SCORE, you know, you go down there and you start meeting all the different people. And of course, you've been dealing with the Hitos and all that in Mexico with wide open. So you had a lot of uh, expertise right there, you know. We do, and a lot of the people that are helping us with SCORE have uh, been with Wide Open for a long time. So, <clears throat> you know, it's really important to have uh, people on the team that, that have a lot of relationships and know a lot of people, and, and uh, there's a lot of things that you have to worry about down in Baja as far as, um, you know, um, making sure that you're taking care of everybody. Because I, I know a lot of people don't realize how much it is just even to put on the San Felipe race that you, you guys, we just put on, you know, score put on. And uh, there's a lot more that you know, people are out there watching right now. Always got this to say, you know, but basically there's, it's a lot to it. It's just not, you know, you just don't go out and like you were saying, Lou, just go out and tear up the desert and, and then no, it's go the, home. The beauty about it is that Roger did it. Uh, uh, and a lot of the promoters do the same thing. You know, they put on a race and everybody goes and has a good time and don't think about all the things that went, the underpinnings that went on before the race and what goes on after the race. And that's the credit goes to the promoters 
to Roger and to Sal. He was there for a long time. Uh, at one time, we were great friends, and then we became a little bit of enemies, and then we eventually settled things because it is a lot of work. You know, it's not all just sitting there in the, in the driver's meeting and boasting about what you did. It's the hard work that takes months and months and months. Uh, he's got the 500 coming up, and I know he's going to have to start working on it right now to find the routes, to negotiate, to go with the deal, uh, with the ajitos, and it's a lot of work. So that when the races come, uh, this is the best part, I think, of, of being a promoter. The racers come and all they think about is racing. They don't need to know about going through an ajito and a gate and who do you have to negotiate with and all the permits you had to go get and all the machinations that you had to do. They just want to come and race and have a good time. And I think that's the, a mark of a good promoter. What do you think? You know, you were down there, uh, the, the parties. I mean, starting out Thursday night. With, have you ever seen anything like that? No, and it, it was great. Uh, uh, I've been to th things like that in the past. I remember the, you know, the old mint days where, where the parties just started on Wednesday, went on through the whole weekend. Uh, it was great. I, I think he did a great job. We were down there, obviously, uh, concentrating on our own vehicles, and fortunately, we got a chance to win with one of them, checker card, uh, Mikey Lawrence. And, uh, but it was great. The atmosphere was good. What I liked about it most, I think, was the, uh, the, uh, the, the tone of the race. You know, everybody seemed very hopeful, very upbeat. Mm -hmm. uh, Roger chose a, a, a little bit of a different course, which is always great because you get stale after doing the same thing over and over, and it's not good for the land, you know. It, if you leave the land alone to replenish itself, man, it's great. I remember when I was doing events, in, in a lot of events in, in Mexico and in Baja, I never used the same course twice in two years or three years. I always try to find something different because when you come back to it, it's almost like a brand new course. That's More exactly work. why we did, did it that way. Yeah. That's why um, Jose G uh, picked out the areas that he did. And yeah. We tried to stay off of the old course, you know, give it some time to, to heal itself. And you know, the racers appreciate that. Yep. I mean, they know it. You know, they, they well, finally they got something different that they got to worry about in pre-run. And uh, I heard the gentleman earlier today about pre-running and stuff, you know. And then, yeah, I, if it was up to me, I, I would just go there cold, caught, and then you just go and race. But, you know, you're dealing with Mexico, and you're dealing with the economy down there, and you're dealing with the people over there. And so... The benefit has to be there as well for them to, to see the racers come out and spend some money and, and have the week or two weeks or three weeks to, to pre-run. That brings, that solidifies the promoter with the cities, whether it's Mexicali, Ensenada, Tecares, uh, uh, San Felipe, San Quintin, wherever you go, you give them a little extra business, they want you back. And he's telling me that he's got ejidos calling him, that they want him to go through their, their land, which is fabulous. I mean, I can't think of a better, a better reason to promote events is when you, people want you there. Yeah, I mean, like you said, uh, he's had a great relationship. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what you as a promoter know. When you have that going for you, it just really makes it so much easier to get these events. It's going. wonderful. I mean, I, I, I took the time, for example, as Roger and I were discussing it, to before any event that I put on, I usually, uh, most of the ajitos have their, their general meetings on a Sunday with a barbecue, you know. And um, my buddy Max uh, and I used to go to these things, and uh, I spoke the language, which helped a little bit, and uh, just party with them and talk to each other like we were friends. And pretty soon the conversation came, okay, what are you going to do about the next race? Well, I like to use this, and I like to use that. Oh, wait a minute, Jim over there is in charge of that one, and so forth. It was done before I even lay out a, a ribbon, you know? And, it, and that's a real advantage for a promoter to do that. That's really, that takes a lot of the heat off of you. To be able to go, with it. and then yeah. the more important thing is that when you're done, to go back and say to them, "Thank you. Did we do some damage?" I usually, I usually used to take my uh, insurance broker with me mm -hmm. and my adjuster, and you'd be surprised all the stuff that showed up in the courses. Sometimes we found a cow that had been dead for like six months, but it was dragged into the course. The guy wanted to claim that we, we killed it, you know. <laughs> But on, on the other hand, it was really great because if somebody had a, you know, I, I remember one time specifically, we, we had a turn around this ranch and we took down about 50 feet of fence, including his gate. Mm -hmm. And in the States, it would have cost you $5,000. And I used to always carry a lot of Takata beers with me because that that's where our sponsors. And uh, so I offered the guy, let's have a couple of beers. What do you think it's going to cost me to, to fix that? And I'm thinking he's going to say, but give me 500 bucks. 
He says, well, it probably going to cost me about 30 or $40 dollars in material. He says, my adjuster wrote the check, and then he cashed it right then and there and gave him the money, and the guy was a happy camper. Man. It, it, it takes that little, but Roger already knows because he's been doing the, uh, the, uh, his excursions there. I think it's great. Well, real quick, we got a, just about a minute left here. Lou, talk about your book real quick. I know you're, you're a writer. I, I'm a writer. I, I've written a couple of books, uh, a Baja, a, a big novel that I have out, uh, uh, Dazed and Confused in Baja, one, and then Dazed and Confused in Baja, two. Uh, but I also want to talk a little bit, uh, Roger and I were talking about earlier, uh, I have a series. And I don't want to do just a, an offer race, so I'm putting together a series called uh, Pure Side-by-Side -side Series, strictly for the UTVs. And, and side by sides, and uh, it starts in April 19th, 20, 21st in California City, where I live. And uh, that's another area that really we're trying to nurture because everything around it is closed. So I'm able to do a lot of things there because we take care of things, you know. So I invite everybody to uh, check our website, which is AVE Racing, WWAV Racing. Check it out and come and see us. All right. Thank you very much thank for you. coming Appreciate on the show, Lou. Thank you very much. And Roger, thank you very much once again, as Thanks. usual. Well, once again, it's another show. Time is up. We're going to thank uh, all our fans out there for watching. Tell everybody about the show. We'll be here next Tuesday night, once again, at 7 o'clock, Dirt Live. Thank everybody, our crew. We're out of here. We'll see you next week.